Hi everyone, today we will talk about the topic of motion in a plane. Now, before we learn about this topic, we need to have the knowledge of motion in a straight line and some concepts of vectors. Both I have completed in my previous videos. I will share the link in the description. Now, when we studied motion in a straight line, we learned that the particle will be moving along a straight line. And that straight line we can treat as x-axis. X-axis means basically it is a scale. Now every scale will have a zero, right? So that zero is what we call as origin. Now when the particle is here, we give the distance of the particle from the origin as x. And if our particle is moving, then this x coordinate will be a function of time. By function of time, what do I mean? As time changes, the x coordinate will also change. That means if you take a very very small displacement dx and divide it by a very small interval of time dt, then dx by dt is what we call instantaneous velocity. We have learned in differentiation, right? Similarly, if you take a very small change in velocity and you divide it by a small time taken, that is what we call as acceleration. So just like velocity is rate of change of position, acceleration is rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Okay. However, when our particle is moving in a xy plane, then its x coordinate also will be function of time, meaning x coordinate can change as well as y coordinate can change. Right. So when the particle is here, this is x coordinate and this is y coordinate. Similarly, when the particle reaches here, for example, this will be x coordinate which is different from this right so this x coordinate is different from this and when it is here the y coordinate will be also different so when a body moves in a plane both x and y is a function of time matlab both x and y changes with time right now here this x represents the position right and what this dx represents this dx represents a very very small displacement so when the particle goes from here to here, this will be your displacement, right? From initial position to final position. So your velocity, instantaneous velocity will be always in the direction of this dx. And if the particle is moving this side, dx will be this side. So velocity vector will be also this side. Now, when the particle is moving in a plane along this path, at a particular instant when the particle is here in what direction it is trying to go or in what direction will be its instantaneous velocity as you know instantaneous velocity is small displacement divided by small time now small displacement will be from here to here right so it will be in this direction it's quite difficult to see so let me zoom this part so if I zoom that part, it will look something like this. So this will be the direction of your small displacement in a very small interval of time dt. So in a very small interval of time dt, the particle can go from here to here only. So this will be the direction of displacement. Therefore, that will be also the direction of velocity. Because velocity is always in the direction of displacement. So when, you, when it comes to instantaneous velocity, at this point, if somebody will ask you the direction of instantaneous velocity, you should draw along this small displacement, meaning you should draw along this tangent. So if they give you path, if this is the path of some body and somebody will ask you what is the direction of instantaneous velocity at this point, then what you need to do, you just need to draw a tangent so that will give you the direction of velocity right now this dx by dt is nothing but velocity which is along x-axis because only x coordinate changes but motion in a plane what happens x coordinate also changes y coordinate also changes so what will be dx by dt what i should call it obviously it is velocity but is it this velocity no it is only the x component of the velocity Similarly, this dy by dt, is it the actual velocity? No, dy by dt should be along y-axis, 
right? Just like dx by dt is velocity along x-axis, this velocity is also along x-axis. So this is not the actual velocity. Actual velocity is along this tangent. So what this velocity represents? It is only the x component of velocity. Similarly, what will be this giving you? This will give you the y component of velocity. Now, if you say, but I want to know the actual velocity, not x component and not y component, then what you should do? As you know, this velocity has one component here, vx, and one component here, vy. Right? So, how can you relate this vx and this vy with this v? Obviously, you can use Pythagoras theorem. So, v will be root over vx square plus vy square, isn't it? So, once you know this vx and this vy, you can find the actual velocity in magnitude by using this formula. What about direction? Suppose you want to know this angle. This angle will give you the direction of velocity. So, to find that angle, you can use tan theta. So, tan theta will give you opposite side is vy divided by adjacent side is vx, right? Now, dv by dt was your acceleration. Here, velocity and acceleration are along x-axis only. But here, this dvx by dt represents what? Rate of change of x component of velocity. So, this will give you x component of acceleration. Similarly, this is rate of change of y component of velocity. This will give you y component of acceleration. And just like you can find magnitude of velocity using root over vx square plus vy square, you can find magnitude of acceleration by using root over ax square plus ay square. Let us solve one of the previous year's neat question. And this question is based on whatever topic we just discussed. It says the x and y coordinates of a particle at any time are given by x equal to 5t minus 2t square and y equal to 10t respectively. So, they have given x as a function of time and y as a function of time. x and y are in meters, t is in seconds. Now, they want acceleration of the particle at what time? t equal to 2 seconds. So, here is the question. x is given as a function of time. y is also given as a function of time. We have to find acceleration at t equal to 2 seconds. These are the formulas of differentiation which we will need and we have discussed this already, right? So, to find acceleration from position, first we should reach velocity. After velocity, we have to find acceleration, right? So, instantaneous velocity, how do we write dx by d? Here, what is x given? 5t minus 2t square. Now, if you do the differentiation of the first term, 5 is constant, it will come outside dt by dt then minus 2 is constant, it will come outside then again you have to do differentiation of this t square dt square by dt right, so we have just distributed this to this term and this to this term and constants we have taken outside now dt by dt is 1 and dt square by dt is 2t from this formula right so, this will be 5 minus 4t. Now, is this velocity or x component of velocity? Obviously, this is only the x component of velocity. Because we are only talking about how x is changing. Remember, y is also changing. So, the particle is not moving only along x-axis. So, it will be wrong to say the velocity is completely along x. So, yes, the velocity will have some component along x also and some component along y also. Let us now try to find y component of velocity dy by dt. If you substitute this y here, you will get d 10t by dt. 10 is constant and dt by dt will be y. Right? So, this is your velocity. Now, how to find acceleration? Well, x component of acceleration is dvx by dt. If you take differentiation of 5, you will get 0 and differentiation of minus 4 if you do, 4 will come outside and you will get dt by dt. Right? So, I hope you understood what I have done. This is the formula for x component of velocity which we found. This I have put in this 
formula right to find x component of x acceleration first term is constant 5 is just a number constant so differentiation of constant is 0 and 4 is also constant take it outside then you are left with dt by dt so that will give you minus 4 because this is nothing but 1 right what about ay now ay will be dvy by dt but if you look carefully your vy is constant so since vy is constant there is no time here that means differentiation of constant will be zero so that means your acceleration has only x component it doesn't have y component and therefore the total acceleration is root over ax square plus ay square right but one component is zero ay is zero so your acceleration will be minus 4 meter per second square right root over ax square will be ax which is minus 4 right now we will do a reverse of the previous problem in the previous problem x was given as a function of time y was given as a function of time then what we did we found vx vy then we found ax ay now what they are saying they have given you ax and ay ax is as a function of time ay is a constant assume all the numbers are in si units now they want us to find the position meaning this time we have to find x and y at what time after two seconds assuming it is started from origin so we have to assume it started from x0 y0 meaning from origin at rest so initial velocity we have to assume 0 and we have to assume it started from origin now when bx is given how do we find ax by taking differentiation of bx dvx by dd is ax right but now i want reverse acceleration is given i want velocity so i need to do reverse of differentiation what is reverse of differentiation reverse of differentiation is integration right so let us concentrate on this one first ax what is the formula dvx by dt right so this is the formula for instantaneous acceleration but remember x component equals to 2t now i want vx so what i should do cross multiply integrate this concept we have discussed before also so dvx will be equal to 2t dt so i cross multiply and now i am going to integrate since 2 is constant i will take it outside right so this is integral of t dt and integral of vx now at time 0 what was the x component of velocity when it was at rest so if the body is at rest it will neither have x component of velocity nor y component of velocity right because velocity itself is 0 so x component of initial velocity is 0 and then after some time let us assume it has a velocity vx after what time t now this part if you integrate you will get vx minus 0 isn't it already we know integral of dvx will be vx put upper limit lower limit i hope you remember the formula integral of dx is x so integration of d something will be something so integral of dvx is vx then put upper limit and minus put lower limit similarly what is integral of t dt will t power 2 by 2 upper limit t lower limit 0 this formula also we have discussed integral of x power n dx equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 so if you use this formula you will get this put upper limit you will get t square by 2 minus put lower limit 0 so you will get vx is equals to 2 and 2 will cancel so you will get vx equals to t square so now we have found vx equal to t square right so we can write vx as dx by dt and then we can do the same thing right cross multiply dx will be t square dt then you integrate now at time 0 what was the position remember at time 0 x was 0 because they assume the particle starts from origin so x will be 0 at time 0 similarly after what time they want x they want after 2 seconds right so i can put here 2 seconds or you can put t then at the last you can put t equal to 2 also so let me put directly 2 here okay 
So this is the position x which I want to know after time 2 seconds. So this integration if you do you will get x. Integration of t square dt. So if this is 2 what will be the answer? 2 plus 1 divided by here 2 plus 1. So it will be x cube by 3. So here you will get t cube by 3 then put upper limit to lower limit 0. When you do that you will get 2 cube by 3 minus 0 which will be 8 by 3 meters. So just like we found the x coordinate we need to find the y coordinate also. So acceleration y component is given as 5. So a y is nothing but dv y by dt. Then you have to cross multiply. Right? And then you need to integrate. At time 0 what was the y component of velocity? 0 because it started from rest. And after some time t what will be the velocity? Let us assume v1, the y component of velocity. If you do this integration, you will get v1. And here 5 is constant, you can take it outside. And then integral of dt is t. Then if you put lower limit and upper limit, you will get 5 t minus 0. So your vy will be nothing but 5 t. Once you know instantaneous velocity as a function of time, now vy can be written as dy by dt which is equal to 5t then if you cross multiply dt will come here let me do it faster this time then you integrate from 0 to t also you can do then finally you can put t equal to 2 second let me show you that way also so instead of putting 0 to 2 second like I did the previous one let me put 0 to t and your y coordinate goes from 0 to y isn't it your y variable goes from 0 to y coordinate which we have to find remember. If you do this integration you will get y minus 0 and here you will get t square by 2 and if you put lower limit you will get 0. Right? This we have done already. So your y coordinate will be 5 t square by 2. So after time t your y coordinate will be 5 t square by 2 but in the question they wanted after what time t equal to 2 seconds, so substitute t equal to 2 seconds, 2 square by 2, 2, 2 cancel, so 10 meters. So finally the answer is the position of the particle at t equal to 2 seconds will be 8 by 3 meter, comma 10 meter, right? Let us now see motion in a plane with constant acceleration. If you remember, while discussing motion in a straight line, I told this formula is only valid when A is constant. As I told you, while discussing motion in a plane, your x coordinate will also change, your y coordinate will also change. So there will be displacement along x also and along y also. So what we do, we write the same formula two times, one for x component and one for y component. Okay, to give you an example of motion in a plane with constant acceleration, imagine this x axis is along the ground and y axis is vertically up. I keep a particle at the origin and at time 0, I give the particle some initial velocity in this direction. Does it mean it will continue in this direction? Obviously, no. There is force due to gravity. Due to that force, the particle will turn. Right? It will have to come back, right? Now, after time t, if I assume the particle is here, then if you remember, along this tangent, if you draw an arrow, that arrow will represent the velocity. So, velocity is always along the tangent. So, if this is initial velocity at this point, this is the final velocity after what time t. What about displacement? Displacement is from here to here. Right? So, this vector represents the displacement vector S. And now, you can clearly see this vector will have two components. This is the x component of displacement Sx. And this is the y component of displacement Sy. So, we cannot directly find S, remember, using this formula. So, do not use this formula directly to find this displacement. And the reason is simple. This displacement this initial velocity and all of us know acceleration of gravity is downwards. 
so you can see initial velocity displacement acceleration they are in different different direction whereas when we derive this formula we assume all these quantities displacement initial velocity and acceleration we assume it is along a straight line but here you can see displacement initial velocity and acceleration are not in a straight line so directly you cannot use this formula to find this displacement so what we should do first we should find the x component of displacement using this formula then y component of displacement using this formula and then finally if you want to know this displacement you can use pythagoras theorem here so s will be root over s x square plus s y square right now i am going to share with all of you one of my favorite problem in motion in a plane and that is the hunter monkey problem so imagine there is a monkey which is hanging by some branch of a tree and there is a hunter now the hunter aims his gun exactly at the head of the monkey now at time zero let us assume the hunter fires the bullet b so i am using the symbol b for this bullet with a velocity of u at some angle t now what does the monkey do the monkey is scared right so the the moment the monkey sees the flash of light or the bullet coming at that moment when the bullet was fired right at that moment the monkey leaves the branch hoping maybe she will survive by coming down or he will survive by coming down now the question is if he leaves his hands right at that time the bullet was fired will the bullet hit the monkey or will the bullet miss the monkey that is the question answer this question let us see which one of these two will follow motion in a straight line obviously the monkey will follow motion in a straight line because at time zero he leaves his hands from the branch right so after time t this is the situation at time zero so after time t if i ask where the monkey's head will be so right now the head is here after some time let us assume it is here m dash so m dash represents the position of the head of the monkey i am not drawing the whole body of the monkey because it makes the diagram confusing so this is the head of the monkey as he leaves the branch of the tree as he falls down the head of the monkey will reach some other position m dash now how much height it has fallen let us call this height m m dash so this m m dash will be equal to that is your displacement and since it is moving in a straight line this displacement we can write ut plus half at square now since the monkey started from rest initial velocity will be zero so the displacement which is m m dash will be equal to half and acceleration due to gravity is g t square right so this is your equation one so this is the displacement of the monkey after time t okay now what about the bullet well as the bullet is fired it will not go straight because gravity will curve the path right so the particle or the bullet will follow this trajectory so let us assume it reaches here after time t let me call this point as b dash so what is this b dash this is the final position of the bullet after time t now as you remember i told from here to here this is the displacement of the bullet so this is the x component of displacement and this is the y component of displacement isn't it now this initial velocity itself is at some angle theta right so we can break this initial velocity into two components u cos theta which is your x component of initial velocity and u sin theta which is your y component of initial velocity now how to find sx well for motion in a plane sx will be uxt plus half ax t square but as you know the only acceleration on the bullet is due to gravity right once it is fired and since gravity acts only along y axis there is no acceleration of gravity along x axis so this will be zero 
because the entire acceleration is along y axis so a vector along y axis cannot have x component so this will be zero so what is left now is x equals to ux now what is ux ux is your u cos theta so u cos theta into t right what about sy you remember this is your sy okay so sy will be equal to uy t plus half a y t square isn't it so your sy will be equal to, now be careful about this part because your uy is upward so i will assume upward as positive so u sin theta i will write the moment i write uy as u sin theta i have chosen upward direction as plus if i don't write any sign here it means there is a plus sign right now if i choose upward direction plus then downward direction should be minus and we all know acceleration due to gravity is along y axis there is no x component so this ay should be your minus g into t square. so this will give you sy is equal to u sin theta t minus half g t square now remember i want to know whether the bullet will hit the monkey or not in other words i want to know whether b dash and m dash are at the same position or not after time t if b dash and m dash are at the same position then it means the bullet will hit the monkey right so i need to find this distance because already this distance i have found in the first equation check it out it was half gt square right so this i have found i want to find this distance and this i know already right s y i know so if i call this total height as let's say capital h then in this right angle triangle i think you can clearly see tan theta will be the opposite side of this big triangle is your height capital h and your adjacent is your s x isn't it so what will be height equal to s x tan theta but s x already we found from here so if i substitute this s x here what will i get s x is u cos theta t into tan theta right now tan theta itself i can write sin theta divided by cos theta isn't it now this cos theta and cos theta gets cancelled so this capital h how much it comes out it comes out equal to u sin theta t u sin theta t so this is your this height right now this is the last part so concentrate nicely i want to know what is this distance right because this i have found already so i want to know this distance so if i want to know m b dash distance m b dash then do you realize that this distance is nothing but this total height minus this s y so total height minus s y isn't it so this this side of the triangle this side was capital h right that's why i used for this big triangle i used tan theta s opposite by adjacent so this is my opposite which i wrote capital h so this is capital h this is sy so the remaining part will be m b dash right okay now how much capital h we found u sin theta t so u sin theta t minus how much sy you got u sin theta t minus half g t square right what did i do i just substituted this sy in this equation do you realize that this u sin theta t minus u sin theta t will cancel right and this minus minus will be plus so how much it will come half g t square that's wonderful right because if you go back and check the first equation what was there so the first equation if you remember we calculated this distance right m m dash so m m dash was equal to half g t square but what did we see down that m b dash is also half g t square and the only way this is possible is m dash and b dash should coincide that means 
this is not the trajectory the actual trajectory will be this one so your b dash will be at the same place as m dash so that is how i'm sorry to say but the monkey will be hit by the bullet of course the bullet should be traveling fast enough if the bullet is fired very slowly then it will it will fall here itself but as long as the bullet can reach here it will always hit the monkey so if the bullet is fired very fast it may hit the monkey here so by the time the monkey reaches here the bullet will reach here or if the bullet is not fired that much fast then by the time the monkey reaches here the bullet will reach here but no matter what according to the physics m dash and b dash has to be same after time t that means the position of bullet b after time t and the position of the monkey m dash after time t those two should coincide and that is very sad for the monkey right